So today, common core, same thing, G for geometry, CO for congruence, and it is number 10, which is what we've been doing, um, prove theorems about triangles. Interesting, last night I was, I don't know, feel sorry for me, but last night I was really going through common core stuff, because you guys have to take that test, right? And one of the criticisms, you know, because people like to criticize everything, one of the criticisms off the, off the Common Core was this exact strand. Prove theorems about triangles. Well, that includes a lot of stuff. You guys agree? I mean, we keep writing the same strand down over and over and over again, right? So the Common Core says, oh, we've narrowed it down. We've given it less to know, right? Well, this one here covers a lot of stuff, doesn't it? So they didn't really narrow it down at all. Anyway, moving on. So example one, find the length of TU a VU, and all the angles. Okay, so first of all, right off the bat, um, if this is equal to this and this is perpendicular, then it does make an isosceles triangle. Therefore, this side TU must be equal to UV. We just learned that theorem. So let's just take our 3X plus our 9 and set it equal to 7X minus 17. Okay? Yes, Claire. Uh, how do we know that it's an isosceles triangle? Because there's no hash marks saying that. Great question. Okay, so let's go through what we know. If we know this side's equal to this side, right? We know this angle's equal to that angle. Okay. And we know by the reflex of that's equal to that, that, that force it. You ask good questions, Claire. Thank you. Um, yeah, we just can't take it for granted, can we? So let's solve. Minus 3x minus 3x. We'll have a 9 equals 4x minus 17 plus 17 plus 17, right? What's that? A 26 equals 4x divided by 4. What's that? A 6.5. Just real quick. Get 26 divided by 4. 6.5. So x is 6.5. All right. Big deal. That's not the answer. Let's plug it in, right? So let's put 6.5 right in there. Sure, because that's what x equals. So 3 times. 6.5 plus 9. I get a 28, so this side's going to be a 28.5. And this side is also 28.5 because they're equal. I don't need to plug it in. They're equal, right? So 28.5. Okay, and then to get all the angles, um, I know it's an isosceles triangle. So if this is 54, this is 54, right? To get angle U all by itself, I'm just going to go 180 degrees minus parentheses, 54 plus 54. Somebody's way ahead of me that I like that. Okay, what's 108 minus 2 times 54? 124. So the whole thing, that can't be right. I Nope, that can't be right. Try it again. 2 times 54. There you go, 72. And if I take 72 and divide that in half, I get 36 and 36. Thumbs up. Seem pretty easy. Okay. Anybody sideways? Everybody good? Thumbs down. Jaden, you have that wonderful expression. There you go. All right. Example two. So it's just the converse. If this is perpendicular and this is 74, this is 74, it's going to make that a an angle bisector, right? It's the converse. So A, B, C, A, B, C, this whole thing's 112. All right, I'm going to cut that in half, right? It's 112 divided by 2. 112 divided by 2 is 56. So this angle's 56, and this angle's 56, right? And then... 56 and 90 minus 180, so let's see, 180 minus my 90 plus my 54. I said 56 and I wrote 54, yeah. didn't I? It's Friday, huh? It is Friday. It is. How about 56? I said 56 and I wrote 54. It's okay, it's Friday, huh? 180, thanks you guys, minus 90 minus 56. 146, that is not right either. Try it again. I think you subtracted the I did. Minus 56. There you go, 34. 34 and 34. There you go. 
So example three, same thing. If this angle is 90 and this is angle is 90, if this is equal to this one, then um, we know the two triangles are congruent, right? Which would make these two angles equal, right? One more time. This side's equal to this side, right? That's 90, that's 90, and this side's equal, so we know they have to be equal. Um, so I can just set my 5x plus 23 equal to my 6x plus 14 minus 5x minus 5x. I get a 23 equals an x plus 14 minus 14 should be 9. Yep, x equals 9. Okay, so now let's plug that in. Am I going too fast? Am I okay? Okay, 9 goes into there. 5 times 9 plus 23, 45 plus 23, I get 68. So this angle then is 68. This angle is 68, okay? Um, you know, the easiest way to find these angles, subtract from 90. That's the easiest. These two have to add up to 90. You agree? I mean, if 90 of it's used here, then these two have to add up to 90. So I'm just going to go 90 minus 68. Minus 68 is a 22 and 22. Pretty easy. Okay. Turn the page. Oh, yeah. All right. So, perpendicular bisector, right? So, let's graph it. A is negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Let's draw that in. And let's think about what it says. Now, AB is a line segment. It's a segment, it's not a line, so it can have a middle, right? You guys agree with that? This line segment has a middle. In fact, my guess is the middle of AB is right there. Do you guys agree with that? I mean, we could just count it, right? Down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. It's got to be in the middle, okay? So that's got to be its midpoint. So if I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector, I've got the bisector part, right? I do know that my line that I'm looking for has got to go through there, okay? Now, what's the perpendicular part all about? Well, let's see if we can go back to something we know from algebra. Two lines that are perpendicular will have opposite slope, okay? What do I mean by opposite slope? Yeah, oh, nice word negative reciprocal. So if the slope of AB is down 1 over 2, down over 2, so AB, the slope of AB is down 1 over 2, its perpendicular slope would be a positive 2 over 1. You all right with that? Now there's several ways to do this problem. One way is to use an equation, which we could, and if we were in an algebra class we would, but since we're in a geometry, we're just going to do it but with geometry. So if I went from here up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, the perpendicular bisector is this line right here. All right, let's look at this line. Does it bisect AB? Yeah, it goes right through the middle, doesn't it? Let's look at this red line. Is it perpendicular? Absolutely, because it has the negative slope. Now, here's the next part. We need the equation, all right? To find the equation, we need to go back to algebra. Equation of line. Remember, y equals mx plus b. Remember that? So I know the slope of the bisector, that's this orange line, is up 2 over 1. So y equals up 2 over 1 x. And its y-intercept is at 3 plus 3. That is the equation, the equation of the perpendicular bisector, okay? Thumbs up? That seemed pretty easy. Okay, so not a lot of homework, and we have, we've got plenty of time to get it done. Page 304, 121 odd and 46.